Welcome to 30 minutes of gentle fluid yoga. To get started, let's take a seat at the top of your mat. And you allow your hands to draw either onto your lap or into your heart center. And with your eyes closed, we're gonna begin breath of equal duration. Allow your inhales and exhales to slow. And then inhale to the count of four. One, two, three, four, and exhale four, three, two, and one. Repeat that a couple more times. Now allow your breath to return to a more natural pace. And dry your hands into heart center. You can set a dedication for your practice if you like. And to begin, we'll plant the hands at the top of the mat. Slide your knees behind you so that you're in a tabletop. And from here, we're going to begin some circles with our hips. Moving clockwise, you can slide your hips to the right, back behind you over to the left, and then sweeping them forward. Take a couple of these nice gentle movements with the hips. direction, moving counterclockwise, left, back behind you, to the right, and forward. Coming back to center, allow the hips to get heavy in child's pose. The forehead might even rest all the way down towards your back. to come into your downward facing dog. Allow the hips to begin to lift. Toes can tuck behind you. And once you've come into your downward facing dog, you can bring in some gentle movements, maybe pedaling out your feet, or just allowing the knees to bend and straighten a few times as you open up the backs of your legs. Begin to walk forward. The feet coming all the way up towards the hands at the top of the mat for our first forward fold. A gentle ragdoll where you can grab hold of your elbows and maybe even soften your knees a little bit. Engage your core to rise all the way up to standing. Sweeping the arms overhead, allow your fingers to interlace and then flip the palms towards the sky. For a side bend, begin to tilt your body towards the right side. core, come back to center, keeping the body in line as you tilt way over towards the left side. As you come back to center, use an exhale to forward fold over your legs. Inhale into your flat back, getting long through the spine. And with your next exhale, fold back over your legs. And inhale, rise all the way up to standing. Draw your hands into your heart center as you fold over the legs. Repeating that half sun salutation. A flat back, folding over your legs. And this time, slide your left leg back behind you. And just begin to stretch the left calf. You can gently rock a few times, pressing the left heel back behind you. And into a twist, the left hand stays planted on the mat as the right hand reaches all the way up towards the sky. Mm -hmm. 
as the right hand draws down towards the mat to come into your warrior two. Drop the back heel to the earth and allow the arms to spiral. And as they level out, draw a nice deep bend into your front right knee. And here, allow the breath to get steady. Maybe a little bit longer as you relax your shoulders. And to reverse your warrior two, flip up the front palm. Keep and maintain that nice deep bend in your front right knee. And as you allow the hands to plant the top of the mat, the left foot will step forward. And into a forward fold, you can grab the backs of your calves and allow the head just to hang heavy. As you rise to standing, draw your hands into your heart center. And from here, we're going to begin a standing back bend. We'll allow the arms to move into eagle arms, the left arm sweeping under the right. And as you draw your belly in and up, begin to lift your elbows and allow the thumbs to press away from your face. And we'll switch arms from here. Taking eagle arms this time with right elbow underneath the left. You draw the belly in, lift through the heart, lift the elbows high, and a nice long steady breath here as you feel your shoulders begin to open. As you unravel, sweep the arms all the way up. Use an exhale to fold over your legs. An inhale to come into flat back. And when the hands touch to the mat, this time we'll slide the right leg behind you. Allow the right calf to begin to stretch, just gently rocking and sending some energy through your back heel. By planting the right hand, reach your left fingers up towards the sky, opening into a twist. as the left hand comes down into your warrior two, the back heel will drop to the mat. And as the arms level out, see if you can relax your shoulders, keeping the left knee stacked right on top of your left ankle. And then that long and nice steady breath. Reverse your warrior two, keeping the belly drawn in. Allow your neck to be neutral, just relaxing through the muscles across your neck and your upper shoulders. Allowing the hands to plant at the top of your mat. Step forward into a chair, placing the right foot next to the left foot. And from here, as you bend into your knees, you squeeze the thighs, draw your belly in, and reach the arms to the sky. As you come to standing, draw your hands into your heart center. You're going to shift into a warrior one. So allow your left foot to get light. Steps all the way behind you as you drop your left heel to the mat, reach your arms towards the sky. You want a nice deep bend in the right knee and the belly will be pulling in and lifting up just slightly. come into Parshvottanasana, you place your hands on your hips, straighten your right leg, and then hop your left foot up maybe about 
four or six inches closer to your right as you begin to fold, drawing your chest closer towards your right shin. If you need to bend or soften the right knee to place the hands on the mat, that's okay. And then each slow and deep breath here allows us to fold a little bit deeper. Crawling your hands forward will allow the left leg to get light, lifting into a standing split as you transition back into your chair. Left foot will place right next to the right one, and as your knees bend, the arms rise. Here, try to relax the shoulders and keep the breath in that long, steady pace. As you return to standing, hands at heart center, we'll transition to warrior one on the other side. So now the right foot, it'll slide all the way back behind you. As the heel drops, try to keep your hips square and reach the arms towards the sky. Again, the gentle drawing in and a little lift to the muscles of your belly. As the hands move to your hips. For Parshvottanasana, right foot gets a couple inches closer to the left. And you can soften the left knee if you need as you place the hands down towards the mat. Over the next couple of breaths, you'll be able to fold a little bit deeper, relaxing the shoulders and the muscles of your face. And as your hands begin to crawl forward, the right leg will lift a standing split just for a moment. You stretch the leg high and return to your chair. Place the right foot next to the left one. Bend the knee, sweep the arms up with a strong belly. And this time within the chair pose, we open up the shoulders. Fingers clasp behind you. Shoulders draw in and they slide back and down. The fingers stay clasped as you turn it into a forward fold. Soften your elbows to slide the fingers apart and rise. Come all the way up to standing. Draw the hands into your heart center. And we'll take a sun salutation. Arms reach to the sky. Exhale, forward fold over your legs. Inhale into your flat back. And as the hands plant, you can step the feet back into a high plank. With your exhale, you're going to lower. You're gonna lower either all the way down, dropping the knees and lowering the chest, or just halfway down for your chaturanga. As you press the hands into the mat, lift your chest, upward facing dog or cobra. And with this strong core, and we're going to lift the hips, returning to downward facing dog. And if you need that little gentle movement of pedaling out the feet as you settle into your downward facing dog here, a nice slow breath. Looking forward, you can step couple small steps or a couple large ones feet all the way to your hands and then a forward fold an inhale to rise come all the way to standing and draw your hands into your heart we're going to repeat that sun salutation inhale reach the arms to the sky and exhale forward fold over your legs inhale into your flat back and as the hands plant maybe this time you hop back to your chaturanga lift for your upward facing dog 
And as you exhale, hips high, downward facing dog. as the right leg begins to lift. For your three-legged dog, allow a bend to come into your right knee. And the right hip will lift a little bit higher than the left one so the hips are stacked. Fingers squeezing the mat so your core stays strong. And then we're gonna draw that right foot all the way forward to the top of the mat, placing it in between the hands. And for a low lunge, the left knee releases lightly down towards the earth. As you find balance here, palms can stack on the front right knee. And then as you begin to deepen into your back bend, take your hands, interlace them, and place them right at the back of the head as you begin to lift through your heart and your chest. by placing the hands at your heart center. And we'll take it into a deeper twist, twisting over your right leg. The left elbow can press near the thigh. As you press your palms together, you maintain length through the spine, energy through the core, and you begin to twist a little deeper as you exhale. As you come back to center, place the hands on the mat so that you can come into a half split. Here we allow the right heel to scoot forward and with either a little bend in the knee or allowing the right leg to get a bit more straight. And we'll fold over your right leg. Try to maintain lightness in the hands, a little engagement in your core, and even some energy out through the ball of your right foot. Nice long and slow steady breaths here will allow you to go a little bit deeper. As you lift, return the right foot to the mat so we can come into lizard. The hands will move to the inside of the right leg and just gently peel the right knee off towards the side. You'll be on the pinky toe edge of your right foot and you can either stay on your hands or if the hip allows, you might drop all the way down onto your elbows or your forearms, taking it a little bit deeper. As you plant your hands, tuck the back toes to slide the right leg behind you. And lifting your hips, return to your downward facing dog. For three-legged dog on the other side, left leg lifts, left knee bends, and then the fingers squeeze the mat as you draw energy all the way up the spine, keeping the breath long and steady. For a low lunge, the left foot will step forward in between the hands. And as the right knee releases lightly to your mat, just place your palms, stack them on the left knee. And then as they reach up towards the sky, you can interlace your fingers, making this little nest right at the back part of your head as you lift the heart and the chest, increasing the back bend. For the deeper twist, place your hands at heart center, twisting left now. The right elbow will move towards the outer part of your left thigh. And as you press the palms together, keep length through the back. As the hands lightly touch the mat for a half split, Slide your hips back, slide the left heel forward, and then energize through the left foot, curling the toes in and up towards your shin. Long and slow breaths here as your fingertips remain nice and light on the mat.
and as you crawl forward into lizard, the palms will plant to the inside of the left foot, and then the left knee gently tracks towards the side. You can stay up on the hands, or you begin to lower down onto your forearm. As you begin to lift, slide the left leg behind you into tabletop, and from here into your child's pose, the hips draw closer to the heels and the forehead rests down towards the mat. They come into a tabletop. Allow your shoulders to be over the wrists and the hips over the knees as you begin cat-cow, a series of up-down motions with the spine and allowing your breath to move the body here rhythmically. find a neutral position where the hips stay high and to come into anahatasana or inchworm the hands will crawl forward as your chest melts down towards the floor maybe your forehead or even your chin could rest just lightly on the mat As you lift, come into your tabletop so that we can draw the right shin forward to come into a pigeon. The right shin moves towards the wrist, and as the left leg slides back, you can either stay upright. Over time, you might lower down onto the forearms. Or perhaps you even allow the elbows to slide out towards the side and stack your palms, making a little nest as your head rests down towards the mat. as you lift. You might take it a little bit deeper here, a couple more breaths in your pigeon, perhaps even allowing the hips to slide a little closer to the earth or sliding the right heel a little further forward. As you lift, We'll switch sides, returning to tabletop. This time, left shin will draw forward. Again, either staying on the hands, lowering to elbows or forearms, or choosing to draw the chest all the way down towards the ear. Now staying within the pigeon. We'll readjust just to get a little bit deeper within the hips. You might slide the heel further forward or allow the hips to sink a bit closer towards the earth. And then return to that nice long and steady breath. And this time as we lift, you're going to slide the right leg around so that you can come to a seated position. And once you're seated, we'll lower all the way down onto our backs. And 
And you can stretch the arms overhead, allow the spine to lengthen, and even close your eyes if it feels comfortable. To come into bridge, you're going to slide the feet in a little hips distance apart. And as your hands press into the mat, the hips will begin to lift. You could even choose to interlace your fingers underneath the back and walk the shoulders a little closer together. Maintaining that long, steady breath and even a little lift right to your chin. With an exhale, release all the way down to the mat. You can draw your knees into your chest and just gently sway side to side or Hug the knees in towards the chest, giving your back a little stretch and massage. To return to our bridge, plant the feet and hands once more, lift the hips. Interlace the fingers, walk the shoulders in, and this time, you're going to begin to draw the right knee up and in towards the chest and the right foot straight towards the sky. Now keep the breath long and steady and try to lift the hips a little higher then switch sides. Right foot down, left leg high. As the left foot returns to the mat, you lower the hips all the way down, hug the knees in, and gently stretch the back. To take a spinal twist. Allow the knees to fall off towards the right side. Your left shoulder and even your gaze can fall back and towards the left slightly. To switch sides, the knees draw towards the left. The right shoulder and the gaze off towards the right. Or maybe even at this point, you allow the eyes to close and your breath to get a little slower and a little deeper. As you return to center, for Supta Baddha Konasana, we allow the soles of the feet to come together, the knees to fall towards the side. The palms will face up towards the sky and the eyes can close. And our final pose, Shavasana. The legs will lengthen. And the eyes can be closed and the jaw is soft. We allow anything even resembling tension to begin to melt away. You feel your hands relax. Your shoulders. Even all the muscles across your chest, your heart. The hips draw heavy. The thighs soften. Even the heels of your feet seem to sink a little bit down within the mat. And as the breath slows down, the mind too begins to slow down as well, allowing everything to relax and soften. As you allow your breath to deepen, you might bring an awareness back into your body or even recall your intention as you go about the rest of your day.